Where did Dad get his fig tree from? The one in Kingston? Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> Do you know? Yeah. I think he planted it himself, didn't he? Kind of remember it being pretty small at the beginning. I mean, I don't know. Do you know? It was small when it first came. It was like this big. And where did it come from? Well, I was hoping you could tell me that. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. Do you know? Or do you think you know? Well, I think I know, but Mom says it came from a different place than I remember. My father's fig tree died in the winter of 92, 93. At the time, I didn't know because I was living far away in Italy and no one had bothered telling me. I only found out after my father had already died of cancer and I was back in Canada helping my mother sort out his things. No one had bothered telling me about the cancer either. I don't remember because I think it... Like, was it when when we were still in high school? So my memory is really clear. And we were much younger than that. We weren't in high school. Okay. I was probably in grade two or three. Okay. And dad had been on a trip. He'd been to Villanueva or he'd been to Italy for a conference or something. And he brought it back from Italy? So I remember dad came home from Italy and every time he went to Italy, he always came back with a bunch of presents and salamis and stuff like that. And this one year, he came back with a bottle with this little fig tree in it. Well, I think you've got the story wrong. The summer after the fig tree died, my father traveled back to his tiny Italian village, and we spent what turned out to be his last two weeks together in this childhood home. We were surrounded by his family who all shared the garden. They didn't know anything about his health till his second last day of his life, when he just couldn't pretend any longer that things were fine. I went to a new Italian hairdresser. And as I sat there having my hair cut, up in the little basement window were these plants. And I said, oh, what are those? And he said, they're little fig trees growing. I said, could I buy one of those? And I don't know what he charged me, a dollar or two dollars or something. And I think that was the best birthday present I ever gave your dad. That's where the fig tree started. I met a woman at his memorial. She told me that they used to travel together by bus from Kingston to Ottawa each week for a class they were taking. Their bus wound through towns and villages, past small lakes, Canadian shield granite outcrops, fields of corn and cemeteries. He'd look out the window, she told me, and each time they passed a cemetery, he'd say, these Canadians die so sadly spread out all alone with those individual cold stones. I hope I don't die here. I don't remember it ever getting very big. I mean, I know that he cared for it, like he wanted it. I think he really wanted it to grow, but I don't think it ever produced any fruit. Or if it did, I didn't see any. And it was the more, it was the bringing it in and out of the house that was the big chore, because it, it was really heavy. That planter that it was in probably weighed a couple hundred pounds. Like, it took two guys struggling to lift it up. And I just remember that it really hurt your hands, and we'd move it about six feet. <laughs> you would go right outside the door and right in, but I don't think it ever had fruit. I've never liked figs anyway, so... I don't think I paid any attention to it. 
It turned out that he'd come back to Italy to die, to rest his bones the Italian way, in a crypt beside his mother and his father and the two brothers both named Gaetano, who died far too young. You know, when I first brought it home, it was all of eight, ten inches high. It became a very big tree and it had to be cut back all the time to get it back out the door. So I remember Dad was always so proud of his figs and he'd always take me to see the buds, like the little fruit coming. Yeah. So he's constantly taking me outside to show off his figs. And I was totally unimpressed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only other fig tree I knew was the one in Villanueva. <laughs> and that was enormous. I actually hated his fig tree because he showed it so much attention. Well, he loved it. He didn't show me much attention. He loved you, though. No, I know. <laughs> I know. I know he did. But I just remember being jealous of the fig tree. Um, what was the other thing I wanted to ask you? Oh, so you don't remember what happened to the fig tree? No, did Mum kill it? <laughs> did it die? It just kind of died? Dad let it die. Why, because he knew he was dying and didn't want to care for his fig tree anymore? I didn't know that. So what, he just stopped watering it? He left it outside that way. Like, <clears throat> so he knew he had cancer in the summer of 19... Ah, uh, you know what? I remember that now. I remember seeing it outside one time and saying, commenting, saying like, you know, what about your fig tree? And he was like, oh, it died. It's like he didn't want to let it live. He saw no purpose for it. Yeah. He didn't think he'd make it to the next summer. Huh. And he didn't. I was shooting an eight millimeter film leading up to my father's last day. We shot almost entirely under the giant fig tree in the front yard of their childhood home. And then do you remember when I was shooting that film in Villanueva? Yes, I remember that. The American cousin or whatever. I can't find that. Really? Yeah. I never finished the film because my father didn't get out of bed on our last shoot day. I have no idea where those reels of film are. It could be anywhere. 